Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be working with a large piece of part seasoned elm. It's still quite wet, I've rounded it off on the bandsaw and it's mounted on the lathe behind me so I'll go to the lathe and let you see the wood before I start turning. So this is a very large blank from uh, the elm that I got in the middle of last year. It's still quite wet, it's a lot wetter than the cherry has been. I'll take a moisture reading of it at the end of the finished turning before I put it in the oven to dry it. Um, but it has some of the bark left on the outside. I did take the chainsaw across the top of it to remove the bark to help the drying process. But I'm going to turn it like it's a natural edge bowl so there'll still be a rim on two sides that has the bark on it and it will have a normal rim for the rest of it. But it looks like it's going to have some really nice figuring on the inside. There is one or two places where there are signs of what used to be a, a little burr on the outside of the bark. I don't know how far that will transfer to the inside of the bowl. So I'll get this roughed out ready for going in the oven. The blank is quite an irregular shape at the moment as on one side it's only a few mil away from the tool rest and then on the other side it's about an inch away. So I'll start by facing off the bottom, forming a tenon on the bottom so that I can reverse it and taking a rough shape around on the outside. I'm pleased with the outside of the shape now and there is some really really nice figuring coming through on the outside of this bowl as well. There is a few sign of some knots. They're probably going to open up 
when I put it in the oven but I'm not too worried about that for the purpose I have in mind for this bowl but the colours that are coming through sweeping from reds into browns is really nice and there's this really interesting figuring going on here as well so I'm not sure what's going to happen with this throughout the drying process I'll keep an eye on that I might do it for shorter periods and check on it from time to time just to let it uh, adjust a bit better so I'll turn this around now and start hollowing out the inside That's the rough turning finish now. I'm reasonably happy with the shape that has come out of this piece. It slightly returns in on itself on the outside shape and the inside shape follows that curve as well. I uh, quite like the, the natural edges on either side of it as well. I think it will be a really nice bowl when it's finished. There's some gorgeous figuring on the inside 
a few little signs of uh, burr knots in there and also on the outside as well which the likelihood is that they will open up uh, through the drying process but I'm not too worried if that happens that will just be a natural feature to the bowl they would probably open up anyway as uh, it is left to dry naturally so I'll take this inside now and I'll go through the drying process of putting it in the oven at around 80 degrees for 20 minutes, half an hour until I can get the percentage down to a state where it will be dry enough to finish turn. The oven is preheating to 80 degrees right now so while I'm waiting for the oven to come up to temperature I'm going to take a benchmark weight and moisture percentage so that I know what it starts with so that I can keep a track of it as it is in the oven. So the starting weight is 1713 grams. So I've made a note of that. I'm going to use the moisture meter now to take a percentage on the inside of the bowl. The outside of it is dry as I rough turned the outside of it yesterday and it's the inside that I've roughed today. So the, the surface of the outside is dry to touch. The inside is quite wet and it's visibly more wet uh, in at the end grain parts of the inside. So I'll take a moisture reading from there. And you can see it's quite high, it's up at over 30% in that corner. It's not quite as wet in at the opposite corner, it's at 16%. It's jumped up there again. Right out on the wings, on the end grain, it's a lot wetter. So about 30% is the starting moisture percentage. So once this is in the oven, I'll leave it in for half an hour. I'll keep an eye on it. I'm unsure about how the elm is going to cope in the oven. The cherry took it very well. So this is the first time I've done this with elm. Um, so we'll just have to see. This is an experiment more than anything. So I'll check back in once it's had half an hour in the oven. At this point the bowl has been in the oven for half an hour and I took it out and left it to cool down and it's now weighing 1,617 grams. So it's lost about 100 grams in the first half an hour. And the moisture percentage is 15% now. So I'm going to put it back in the oven for another half an hour and see how much weight is lost again and what the percentage is after that. I have the bowl back on the lathe now after having been dried in the oven. Its starting weight was 1714 grams and its moisture content was 30% and after having been dried its weight is now 1400 grams um, so it's lost 300 grams in the drying process and the last time I took it out the oven its moisture reading didn't register on my moisture meter so it must have been below 6% and I left it out for two days so that I could uh, fulfill an order that I had for a spurtle so it's had two days after being in the oven to adjust to the atmosphere and now it's got a reading of 12% throughout the entire blank which I think is just the, the ambient moisture around where we are here. So it feels nice and dry anyway for finished turning so there hasn't been a great deal of movement, there hasn't really been any cracks except this one part here where there was a cluster of knots 
it's a bit wavy over this part here. So I'll clean that up first of all and then I'll take some finishing cuts on the inside, get it finished and then clean up fully on the outside. The first thing I'll do is square up the rim as it's gone a bit out of shape. After that I'll use the scraper to clean up the surface on the inside. I'll give you a better view of the inside of the bowl now. As you can see it's really nicely finished on the inside. Some beautiful grain through the centre there. Some nice little bar figuring with the knots there as well. I really love the colours that you get with the elm. It's one of my favourite timbers to work with. The natural edge on either side has come out really nice as well so I'm really pleased with this. So what I'll do now is reverse it. I'll put some of those pads on the inside again pressed up against the jaws of my chuck and I'll turn just a little recess on the bottom to finish it off. And here is the finished bowl. I'm really happy with how this one has turned out. Elm I think is one of my favourite homegrown timbers. It turns really well and sands and finishes to a, a wonderful finish. It's only oil that I have on this sanded up to uh, 320 grit and you can see there's a lovely high sheen finish to it there just with the oil. And I really like the natural edges that have remained on this bowl. It's a very simple design in the shape, a simple curve on the outside and that transfers to the inside as well. But there is some wonderful grain on the inside and a nice addition with the burr 
figuring in there as well. But I love elm, I love the, the tones of the wood, the reds and the browns and the grain is just really nice as well. I think I might have over dried this one a bit. I think I had it in the oven for just slightly too long. It could have done with having just a little bit of moisture left in it to make the turning a, a bit easier. I did get uh, a little bit of tearing on the end, uh, but most of that sanded out really well. So overall, I'm happy again with this project. The drying in the oven still seems to be working, so I'm looking forward to go through more of the cherry and the elm that I have. I also have some other pieces of wood from a tree that I'm not sure of the species, so I might turn one of them soon and see if any of you will know what species that tree is. <coughs> but I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you to those new subscribers that I've received recently as I've been working towards reaching 1,000 subscribers. I've only got a few days left, uh, about 10 days I think, till the 20th of February when, if I haven't met the 1,000 subscriber goal, then I'll lose my YouTube partnership. So I'd uh, be very grateful if you could share this video and share my channel with anyone that you think that might be interested and ask them to subscribe so that I can reach that goal. I think I'm still about 220 or so subscribers away, so I do still have a bit to go. But it is still possible with your help, so if you could share it, it would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.